Today, we honor a modern man and an immodern dream. All right. I recall what was said in the book of Genesis by the brothers of Joseph. Behold the dream. Yes, sir. Come now, therefore, let us slay him, and we shall see what we have become of the dream. Treated 
as a second class citizen under the law. Every child, and I notice our young people today and around the world, every child today, because of the sacrifice of that movement, can become he or she the president of these United States. During his lifetime, he sought to create a common ground where people from all walks of life can join together to resolve issues to help make all of us free. Working alongside people of all age, race, and background, Dr. King encouraged all Americans to work together to strengthen the community. Reduce poverty, acknowledge dignity, and respect for every man. Mm -hmm. Certainly gain has been made, we've come a long ways, but there are more to be accomplished. In confronting some of the worst of our nation, Dr. King made it clear so much of what is best. When I see today, not only as we celebrate him today, Martin Luther King first and foremost, he was a man of God. Humble yes. in his presence, Dr. King did not just come forward with a dream just for people of color but for all of humanity. Right there in the Birmingham jail, he penned a letter and said these words, we are caught in an unscapable network of mutuality, tied to a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Injustice anywhere yeah. is a threat to justice everywhere. Right. I want to say today that Dr. King accomplished more in his 39 years than most people are able to do in a century. This day of celebration of Dr. King throughout these United States give us the opportunity to reflect on his teaching, especially on diversity. Diversity is the strength of this nation. All right. Amen. When we look and see of all the race of people that's in the United States, Dr. King said diversity is the thing that's going to make something happen. We need to come together, even on this day, to bring Dr. King's dream back into our lives, our neighborhoods, and yes, our schools. Dr. King himself lived under the threat of harm, even his family. His response was not violence. He rose above violence. He hated violence. His response was this. I want to shine the bright light of truth on the shortcomings and on injustice. We need to rekindle and strengthen that light. We need to keep marching towards the dream using faith and hope to sustain us. This great city of Baton Rouge, I know this, that many things happen in this city, but because of Dr. Martin Luther King, national message and dream, it has impact on us. We should stand together work together simply because of the safety of our children even in school. Amen. Together we need to liberate our neighbors who feel imprisoned in their own homes. Right. Right. Dr. King was
is an advocate of nonviolence. Alone, countless others. He spoke against violence, oppression, and indecency. That he and millions of fellow Americans were forced to endure. This city and cities around the world are not just buildings, not parked in stadiums and fine restaurants. But this city and other cities in America are communities, communities of families. You cannot have a healthy city if it is not working to improve an unhealthy community. It's great to pray, but I want you to know we got to go a little further than that. We need to push shoe leather to our prayers by helping transforming our community, by countering violence, improving education, removing corrupted influences. I'm tired of seeing our families limited by poverty, filled with fear, Scared with grief, intimidated by bullies, gangs, and violence. We need to, coll to collectively come together with a voice. Dr. King was not just someone speaking. He was a voice that resonated into the lives of American citizens. A voice that yet reads out today through the media all over this country today. His voice yet resonates. I have a dream. When I look and see what is happening, we need to come together in voice to shout a message loud and clear to those who feel free to terrorize our children, our neighborhoods, our schools, our cities, and even our lives. I think every one of us today should shout in this place, enough is enough.
came to Gethsemane, wars for do some more wars must be broken. He also said these words, and I believe what he said, that it be continued to take an eye for an eye. The whole world will be black. Jesus. We need to embrace the legacy of Dr. King. Of his example that we need to drive out the darkness, drive out the hate, threaten to hold our nation back. Let us move forward to this brave and new future. Make the dream of Dr. King that he had for his children. Just our, not our own dream, but the dream for the whole nation. Right. Dr. King gave these words before he died, particularly a call to action. Let us rise tonight, as Dr. King said in his letter. Let us stand with a great determination and let us move in these powerful days, these days of challenge, to make America what it ought to be. I want to say that Dr. King spoke of a people, and the people that he spoke of was a people that's supposed to make it to the promised land. I believe in the dream of Dr. King. I have no doubt we have come a long way. But there's still work to be done. Yeah. Uh, many dreams have been shattered, but the dream of Dr. King is still alive. There's work to be done because we see today there's yet division among us. Not only within our city, in the political world, but even among our clergies, that we have become territorial. We are fighting each other across the fence. While the devil is still in the hand on me. Sunday morning is yet the most, at 11 o'clock, the most segregated hour. When whites are down, Hispanics are down, blacks are down. Tell 
this country. We've been exposed to the most great technology of the world. There should not be ignorance that rests among us. Yes, I thank God for Dr. Martin Luther King in his day in the 60s. Uh, Deal with it. 